So the first problem I'm going to do is problem 19 in your textbook. Uh, you can read the problem, pause the video, read the problem, and then follow along. So I'm going to redraw the diagram for myself. Here's the wall and the ramp. <coughs> and the object and the rope, <coughs> excuse me, mass, angle, and all right, mass is, whoa, it's tiny, maybe slightly bigger, uh, eight, that's too big. Anyway, mass is 8.5 kilo, kilograms. It's going to be hard to see. And <clears throat> angle is 30 degrees. All right. First thing, free body diagram. Let's do it right here. And um, so block, and redrawn like so. Tension is pulling up that way. Gravity straight down. Normal force perpendicular to the plane. And um, in a different color, let's just make the components of gravity. Let me do this. Like so. So this would be FG X and FG Y. Um, I call this Y because this is like um, pulling the block into the plane, which to me is very similar to if you have a block on a table, gravity will pull the block into the table if it's a flat table. But if you pull something along the table, that's typically the x direction. And so the component of gravity pulling this down, fg the table, we would call fgx. It's just the way I do it. And so, yeah. So I call this <coughs> FGX and FGY. And uh, let's define some directions real quick. Just to keep consistent. This is the positive direction, negative direction in terms of what we're calling X. And this is the positive direction and the negative direction in terms of what we're calling Y. Cool. So free body diagram. We have the forces. Now, actually, this 30 degrees here. Um, let me show you a little trick to relate this angle <coughs> to uh, one of these angles. Which of these is theta? Um, in my mind, visually, that's not immediately obvious. Maybe some people have that skill. I don't. So I have to draw a picture. And here's what I do. First I make a 90 degree to the flat surface on the bottom. Then I make a 90 degree to the plane. See that? So the plane is like this, and that's perpendicular to the plane. The bottom is like this, and that's perpendicular to the bottom. And by doing that, you can work your way over. This triangle, th this is the hypotenuse, by the way, and these are going to be the two legs of a triangle. And so if this is a 90 degree angle, the lines that I'm tracing here with my pen, and if this is theta, then this has to be 90 minus theta. That's not too hard. And same idea, if this is a 90 degree angle, the two lines that I'm tracing with my pen right now, then if this is 90 minus theta, this has to be theta. All right. Of course, 
this triangle and this triangle don't quite match up. The triangle I drew here, in my mind, matches up with this triangle. So in this triangle, this is theta. See, this bottom angle, bottom angle, which makes this angle theta. <coughs> um, this is just two parallel lines being trans. Was it transversal? Uh, so long since I've done geometry, but I think these are like alternate interior angles or something like that. Anyway, um, so this angle is theta. So our FGX, is, you, as you can see, is going to be the sine of our angle, and the FGY is going to be the cosine makes a difference. If you get those two switched up, things get screwed up. All right, so keep this trick in mind. There's other ways to do it. Geometry, there's millions of ways to think about it and draw. You might have your own way. This may be like, you know, alien to you, and you're like, what did he just do? If you can devise your own way, by all means do it and stick with it. If you like to be creative and come up with your own methods. Um, but again, this is how I do it, and so you're welcome to learn this method if you can't think of another way. Now let's um, let's do this. So what have we done so far? We've done, um, well really we've done, the first thing we did was draw a diagram and then made a free body diagram. Next step is net force equations. <coughs> so let's do that. And we have really two directions, the x direction and the y direction. And since we've broken everything into components that we need to, we can um, set up net force equations in both directions. So F net X in the X direction, that's going to be the sum of all the forces in the X direction, which the forces in the X direction are FT and FGX. All right. Based on the way we've defined positive and negative in the X direction, FT is going in the positive direction up, and FG is going in the negative direction. So we're going to go FT minus FG X. And in the, um, let's do it over here, in the Y direction, F net Y some of those forces, there's two forces, there's F normal, which is in the positive direction, minus F G Y. And again, we know that F net, according to Newton's second law, is M of mass of the object times the net acceleration. So let's, let's do that. Let's change F net X to mass times a net x and this is mass times a net y all right and now we get to the point where we have to think about the problem this is where it can get tricky because you're going to see things like what is the minimum tension needed in order for yada yada to happen? Or if the rope is cut, what's the acceleration at that moment? Or, you know, there's, there's a multitude of different um, scenarios we can have for each of these problems. That's where it gets a little tricky. You gotta use your brains and, and think about what uh, the situation is in particular that they're uh, asking for. In this case, um, we're trying to find, actually, what are we trying to find? Let me look in the book real quick. Um, part A, 19A. Um, sorry about that. 19A. What's the, ten uh, what's the tension in the cord? And B is asking for the normal force. All right. So... Um, okay, so right now this rope is holding the block in place, and so you have to think about what that means physically. That means the block's not moving, which means its net acceleration is zero. And so what we have to do now is plug in zero. That's mass times zero 
equals ft minus fg x. That's the only way you can solve this problem. You have to understand physically that that's going on. Um, otherwise, you're going to be clueless as to where to where to go. That's an intuition. You have to develop that. Um, if you're expecting me to um, give you every you know example of every single situation that exists, it's it's impossible. I can't do. I mean, I guess I could have you do every single problem in the in the book, but you know, you guys have lives and you can't you know you can't spend your entire life doing all that, <clears throat> all those problems, and so. Yeah, you just got to develop an intuition. You got to kind of take the basics that I give you, the map, the roadmap I've given you, which includes free body diagram and net force equations. This is general to every single problem. And take that roadmap and then f complete the map on your own based on your understanding of the problem. That's tough. Physics is tough. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but anyway, it's a little pep talk. I just felt like I needed to give you. So over here, the acceleration is also equal to zero. And that makes life pretty easy. Bye-bye, bye-bye. So this means FT equals FGX, and FN equals FGY. This is what they're looking for in part A, and what they're looking for in part B. And FGX, we know is uh, force of gravity is the mass of the object times 9.8 and the x component is opposite the angle so that's sine and over here fn equals m times 9.8 times cosine of the angle the adjacent all right so ft equals 8 Point five kilograms times nine point eight meters per second squared times sine of thirty. Fn equals eight point five kilograms times nine point eight meters per second squared times cosine thirty. Math ching 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 and you get ft equals 41 points oops 41.7 uh, newtons fn equals 72.1 newtons piece of cake <coughs> now this is a double dot problem 19 double dot those are the e these are technically in my opinion single dot problems the double dot comes from part C if the ropes cut what's uh, actually what is it asking part C <clears throat> if the rope should cut find the magnitude of the resulting acceleration on the block so uh, part C can I fit over here I'm gonna try so we cut the rope snip. Uh, there's no friction, so this thing's going to slide down because gravity's pulling it down. Um, what changes about this? Um, to me, at this point, the logical step is to go to our net force equation. Actually, we could just redraw a free body diagram. I'm just going to go over to the original we did and realize that when you snip the rope, tension force disappears. And so the only force in the x-direction now is FGx. Right? So this equation becomes F net x equals negative, don't forget the negative, FGx. And there is no zero acceleration this time, so this part changes. We have to say m times a, a net equals negative m times g times f of x is a uh, sine theta. Ooh, nice. Masses cancel out. That's fun. So a net 
equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared times sine 30. And that equals negative uh, 4.9 meters per second squared. <coughs> of course, they asked for the magnitude, not the direction. And so the answer technically is A equals 4.9 meters per second squared. But then you should be confident that it, the acceleration is down the block because of this negative. This should work out. You're, uh, if you're cons consistent with your initial d definition of directions, then your answer should work out. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, that's problem 19. Now on to the next one.